Hey guys, I want to dedicate this episode to Chris Chandler Biggins Bryan from Cleveland, Ohio and AIW Wrestling. Chandler passed away a couple weeks ago. I'm pretty sure he listened to every single episode of this podcast. I remember him telling me how much he loved the Randy Ricci episode. So I'm sure he loved the fact that I'm dedicating the Kevin Thorne episode to him. If you want to make donations to help for his funeral, check out AIW's Twitter or just send some positive energy their way. All right, buddy, this one's for you. Enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right, how you guys doing? Come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to the Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. The Life Podcast is personal journalist and entry way into the minds and souls, the hearts and lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I am jet lag. Yeah? You jet lag? Yeah. Nah. Nah, yeah, maybe. It's all right. Besides the jet lag and learning how to speak Australian, most importantly, I am a professional wrestler and I am sitting here live in my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before I go any further, this is a fan support and listener supported podcast. Supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColtCommanda.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend, tweet it out, Snapchat it to your buddies. While you have fictitious dog ears and a dog tongue. The best way that you can support, though, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, the Wrestling Road Diaries, Micro Brawlers, Lapel Yeah Button, and much more coltmerch.com digitalcult.com all right i am back i'm back for two days and then i fly right to baltimore to do some ring of honor business and it don't stop and it won't stop and it can't stop i'm sure that's a hip-hop lyric don't quote me on it though the tour was great i guess matt and i talked a lot about it in the hotel room last week we did do two other shows i did a live podcast in melbourne we did a show in melbourne then a show in Adelaide, and then that was it. I ate like shit. Tim Tams. Do you guys know these things? I mean, I know they're in American stores now, but when you're, you know, when in Rome, when in Australia, eat as many Tim Tams as humanly possible. Right when I think that my mindset is like, okay, I'm good. We're eating good. I don't even like chocolate anymore. I don't even like pizza anymore. I don't like any of this. And then with a snap, like that's how my body and brain works. I could diet and I could be into it for so long. And then once I stop, I'm just, I, I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with me. Self-diagnosed. But I like to think that I know my body most. And I was just, I went at it. I went at it. So now I'm back home. Woke up at 3.30 yesterday. And the good thing about that is, is you're sitting at 3.30, like there's nothing to do. Oh, I belong to a 24-hour gym. Great. I'll go to that. And I'll watch Glow while I do cardio. And then I'll see John Morrison is in the opening scene. Pretty amazing. John Morrison, killing it in Hollywood. Boone, have you watched Boone yet? If you haven't, go watch it. Also watch Glow. He's in it too. Apparently Joey Ryan is also. And a handful of other wrestlers. What am I in? Hey, did, did I talk about the soccer commercial I did? It's called football. I was, I'm was i the voice of Adidas football. I don't know if I talked about that or not. Friend of a friend needed a voice for a thing that he was doing. I got the call. I did a tryout. I went to downtown Chicago. I went in this giant sound studio and I yelled about dudes that I have no clue what their names are for two hours. The Samba Serpent. So you can check that out on the Adidas YouTube page or their other social medias. Kevin Thorne is on the show. That's right. Mordecai. Mordecai is on the show this week and he's real Southern. I don't think I realized how Southern he was. I always thought he was from middle of Indiana. Apparently he's from Tennessee which makes a lot more sense. He lives in Indianapolis now, though, so it's probably why I thought that. And I don't know if he's shared... I, I'm sure he's shared the story a million times, but I don't know. I don't listen to those other things, so it was interesting for me to hear why Mordecai was cut short, what he did with his career, the vampire stuff, who he was growing up, his relationship with Psycho Sid, and more. And I don't know. That's about all I got this week. So let's do a song of the week. And, of course, we have a sponsor. And, of course, that sponsor is Harry's Razors, harrys.com. It's what I've been using for years now. And 
I know it's hard to switch, but it's about that first use. If you can get that first razor, then you'll be on the Harry's path. They sent me some originally, then I reordered, and then I realized how much of a better deal it was than store razors. It just makes sense for Harry's to be my go-to. Don't let Big Razor take all your money. Jeff and Andy won't let you do it. That's why they started Harry's. They bought the factory in Germany, they cut out the middleman, and now they send you razors direct. That's why Harry's can offer their blades at half the price, sometimes better. Listen, they're so confident you'll love their blades. They're going to give you their trial set for free. Just cover $3 shipping. Your free set includes a weighted ergonomic razor handle, five precision-engineered blades with lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, and a travel blade cover. $13 value. You're getting it for free because you listen to the show, and both Harry's and I love you. Let's get you your free trial offer by going to harrys.com slash wrestling. Razor handle, five blade cartridge, shave gel, absolutely free. Harrys.com slash wrestling. Song of the week is by a Washington State-based band, Afraid of the Dark. Support them at afraidofthedark.bandcamp.com. On Facebook, we are Afraid of the Dark. And Twitter, at Afraid of the Dark. I just love this title, so I had to play it. Always a Horowitz, never a Hogan. Enjoy it. We'll be back. We're also brought to you by a new sponsor, Active 5. I've been using this, and I think it's kind of fun and very easy. What prevents you from working out as often as you'd like? Time, right? Well, the folks at Active Body have a solution. It's Active 5, and I've been having so much fun. It's weird. I'm having fun doing body weight workouts in my apartment. It's a pocket-sized digital device that works with your smartphone to coach you through over 105 minute strength training workouts. It even measures your stats and progress too. All Active 5 exercises are isometric based, which is right up my alley as a professional wrestler. They are tough, but it's only five minutes and it's effective. I only worked out like three times in Australia and I wish that this had came to my apartment before I went to Australia. I'm gonna be using this in Japan all the time. Just check it out, check it out and maybe Active 5 is for you. Active5.com, A-C-T-I-V, the number 5 dot com if you enter the promo code colt at checkout active body will give you a free water bottle hey you got five minutes help fire up your muscles anytime anywhere enter that code colt and join me over at activ the number five dot com what should i what should i refer to you today as well uh let uh, we could go down the list of things have uh, you have you ever thought about the order is is Festus number one? Is he the one with the most gimmicks? Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I think I can actually. Uh, can you outdo him? I, maybe, possibly. Because, you know, if you went back to Power Pro Wrestling, which was seven, uh, you know, still seven there. But then it went Mordecai, uh, Kevin Thorne. And then here we are this weekend. And it's Mordecai again. Yeah. No, nah, actually, Festus it, might actually be. Is it me. just seven Mordecai, Kevin Thorne, you had a different one, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was Max Cherry. That was like the first one. Why it was Max Cherry, I have no idea. I think that was Max big... Cherry? Max Cherry, yes, yes. Uh, what was the, uh... oh, it was like the uh, black uh, bodyguard chick, um, whatever, but that was her, like her side her si- her sidekick. No, it wasn't wrestling, it was a movie. Uh, oh. and, and the guy's name was the detective or the bodyguard guy was Max Cherry. And, oh, okay. And it, when, when it, you started yeah. wrestling, did you think like did, in your head? Let's say when did you start wrestling? How old were you? Uh, I was twenty. Uh, just turned twenty one. Really. Twenty one. Yeah, basically. So, which is why do I always find it weird when people aren't eighteen and they? And, okay, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so, assuming you always wanted to be a wrestler, and maybe I assume that wrong. Can I assume that wrong? Did I assume that wrong? I I liked it. I, I didn't see myself as being that. Uh, my my thing was is um, like from seventh grade on. You know, USWA everything. You know, you had uh, in, in Memphis, man. You had the diehard wrestling fans, Jerry Lawler, da da da. And I I remember. Wait, is Jerry Lawler? When you speak of diehard wrestling fans, Jerry Lawler is the number one diehard wrestling fan in Memphis, Tennessee. He's the king, baby. Yeah, no, I mean, no, but he's the number one wrestler. Well, in Memphis, yes. I wouldn't say he's the number one wrestling fan. Yeah, well, yes. But Maybe he, of himself. Yeah, yeah, of himself for sure. <laughs> huh. I love you, Jerry. Uh, but because uh, yeah, he's it, listening to this. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you never know. Uh, whoa, whoa, hello. Hold on, let me pause it. 
we un- we paused and unpaused. Do you remember what we were talking about? I was talking about Jerry Lawler was being a fan. Oh, it was getting back to you when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah. Did you know you want to be a wrestler? The point of what I was saying was, did you like picture yourself having one name and like being that wrestler throughout your whole career? Oh, As no. opposed to just whatever you're given, you do. Yeah, no, no. Uh, man, no. But you went back to something with Power Pro Wrestling and USWA and Jerry Lawler and all the wrestling fans to you not being a wrestling fan, maybe. I don't know. No, I was a, I was a wrestling fan, but like I'd always pictured myself of being an NFL guy. Yeah. Like I was always a big – like from yeah, football, football, football. Uh, in, in high school, my nickname was Night Train. Um, so it was just kind of a – I'd always believed in football where all the all the rest of the kids, you know, that were uh, around, you know, were, were USWA guys and, you know, Jerry Lawler, Dundee, those, those you know. What do you mean they, all the, the kids around? What do you mean? Uh, well, the kids in the, my class and stuff, you know, were huge wrestling fans. Gotcha. I mean, because Saturday morning wrestling, I mean, you woke up at, you know, nine, you got a little bit of cartoons in and then – you know, there's there's USWA on 11. Well, where you know? are you from? Memphis, Tennessee? Oh, yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I grew, yeah, I grew up on Memphis, Tennessee, or, you know, in, in USWA wrestling. But you so. grew up, what town, like, in uh, Memphis proper, like a suburb of Memphis? suburb of Memphis. Okay. Bar- uh, it's Bartlett, basically Bartlett, Tennessee, mm-hmm. so. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Were you, what was it like for, that's interesting. So, when I was in, you know, a suburb of Chicago, only, like, kind of nerds and myself liked wrestling. Mm-hmm. Was it different? Because you're my age, essentially, maybe a couple of years older. But yeah. was it like everyone liked wrestling, like they liked football, or was it? Man, in Memphis, it was just it was a part of it because it was Saturday morning. I mean, like to me, like um, yeah, you know, everybody knew about wrestling, um, and it was weird because my dad was uh, big in the you know uh, you know Southern Baptist Church stuff down there and all that craziness, and uh, basically didn't want me to watch wrestling because he thought it would, you know, promote me to be in violence and stuff like that. Now, granted, he let me watch football and, you know, Dick Buckus and all that stuff, rip somebody's head off. That was fine. But, oh, but you know. Are you but, aging yourself to Dick uh, Buckus? Well, no, but, I mean, you know, he, that that's that was his era, so he would, you know, he would, uh, you need gotcha. to watch this guy, you need to do this, you need to do this, you know, that 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 kind of stuff. Mike Singletary. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah, fine. In another one, yeah. Um, but, you know, it was kind of like that. You know, Lawrence Taylor, you know, um, so it, it was, you know, it, I had to like sneak out to go over to my friend's house, spend the night, and then the next morning, hey man, you know, get up, you know, breakfast, do whatever, and then we'd watch wrestling, and then I'd come home. Uh, kind For of the, thing. I mean, you don't have to lie. For the purposes of watching wrestling, or just like that's what he was watching. I- and to, for, for the a little bit of both, okay. I mean, it was fifty fifty. I, I wasn't. Um, it's not a big deal if you weren't a diehard wrestling. I was fan. never a die. Yeah, yeah, I was never a diehard wrestling fan. I, really and truly, and there, you know, I, I I liked it. I just didn't understand. You know, I just didn't understand it because I wasn't allowed to to love it. You know, I mean, I, I wasn't. I wasn't allowed to like like to sink into it. You know, as I did later on. Um, you know, and, and that was um, basically. My freshman year of college is is when I started working at a gym where all the wrestlers came to, and that was when okay you know you know Sid Vicious and you know those guys you know came in and I was like holy you know these guys are just freaking ginormous you know did you play you so you didn't play college uh, football or anything no I was uh, I had a diff- bunch of different opportunities to go play at like small schools and stuff like that and I could have walked on to University of Memphis and I just. It was just at that time, uh, I, like I was making money at working at the Gold's Gym and uh, uh, selling memberships and stuff like that, get to work out and hang out with my newfound friends, wrestlers, and it was like, all right, this is pretty, you know, this is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so did you was was there pressure? So just uh, I'll skip by this, but like normal mm-hmm. high school life or just normal life growing up? Was there? Uh, uh, I don't know, or like, pre- uh, like pressure, like how? What's that? Like pressure to no be a- pressure. No, I'm just saying. Did you have like a normal? Like I don't know. No, I had pretty normal. Yeah, give me the normal. landscape. Yeah, of yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Going through. Yeah, until- yeah. I, I was a, I was a football player. I did well. All that stuff. Uh, you know, um, parents. I was. I, yeah. No parents. No still, parents. Still together to okay. this day. Yeah. Uh, um, you know. Uh, it, it, no, I mean, like for me, it, like. 
I had a pretty much easy street. Uh, I did go to a private school, uh, and you know, my parents uh, by no means were, were we rich by any means, but they, they, you know, they made all the sacrifices and everything else to, mm. you know, send me to private school, stuff like that. Uh, I was a redhead in school. So, you know, my younger years, I was, uh, you know, I was the picked on ginger until, you know, I figured out weights and stuff like that and started getting bigger than everybody else. When did you start lifting? Was that for like sports? Uh, yeah, I started lifting for sports, right. uh, you know. And then the decision not to go to college at all? No, I went uh, my first year, uh, University of Memphis, um, and, uh, you know, could have played for it just didn't just didn't happen and ended up getting into the uh, uh gold's gym there uh, that was right down the street and just so were you in the bodybuilding kind of culture like did led you become to part of that uh you know, it, i guess but i was so naive to it like i just didn't like i i didn't like I was big. I yeah, I could curl a lot. Uh, my biceps look good, but I didn't know anything else. You know, but I, I meant like the like community that. of those people. It's almost like you get sucked. No, in. No, yeah, I did start getting sucked in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, definitely got sucked into that uh, because, like, um, you know, it was by, about a year into Gold's Gym where um, uh, I started working out with Sid. And uh, a couple of the other bodybuilder guys were like, oh, well, man, you need to, you know, if you're going to be doing that, you need to get on TV and stuff like that. You need to do this. You need some juice. You need right. this. You need that. And I'm like, well, uh, I don't, you know, I, I, like I was taking like the waiter multivitamins thinking that was, a, yeah. you know, what no, was doing. I wasn't even talking you know? about that. Stuff. So, I just meant like the idea of the, of, I don't know, that community. But now, uh, sure, you yeah. start diving into that stuff early. Yeah, huh? yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is what people do, I think, when yeah. they're kind of stupid to not knowing just hey take this okay yeah yeah you just uh, you know as a naive kid you're just you, you just have no idea you're like oh, oh oh yeah sure that's gonna get me you know i mean you know it, it's so, craziness so sid was a local yeah sid uh lived uh basically so uh, you know Arkansas, and that was the first guy what that was the first like wrestler that walked in and you're like oh wrestler yeah, pretty much, man. Uh, he worked out at uh, – I, I opened the gym at 5 o'clock in the morning, and he was there at, like, 5.30. Right, he would come right yep. from the softball game. Well, right? I, well <laughs> the night before. He would go to there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he he would go straight from there. But, yeah, he, he, he got in early and stuff. But the, the funny thing is, is I never once went to a softball game or saw Sid ever pick up a glove or a bat. <laughs> And, and that time, so like I always heard about this this Alleged. great softball legend thing <laughs> yeah. that he never would do anything, and I'm like, man, I, I I've never seen him even wow. play. Oh, you heard it here you know, first. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's like yeah, softball was code for uh, yeah something else. Some sex yeah. orgy. He was yeah. <laughs> who, who knows? Right. But uh, yeah, they, everybody's always like, oh, the softball. I'm like, man, I never even seen him pick up a bat. You know, where was he? Was this WCW or was this WWFE? Uh, this was neither, uh, this is basically about the time he, you know, he's coming back from his neck injury, broken neck, all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's just breaking everything. Isn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically, um, you know, it was, Hey, you know, it was my workout partners missing. Uh, you're here in the morning. Why don't you start spotting me? And then it just became to, you know, I, I don't have anything to do, so I might as well just train. You know, so we started training and everything else, and uh, uh, one thing led to another. And he goes, "Hey, I'm I'm going to Knoxville to go wrestle for Men, uh, Mo on Men on Men on a Mission. Uh, was having a show, and he goes, uh, you 'You're gonna go. You're gonna go with me. You can you can be my tag partner.' I'm like, uh, okay. And like, I never never really even been in a ring. And he goes, we got about two weeks to get you ready for this. So we go to. Well, you say never even been in a ring, but were you like training? Like no, hell so, no. So nothing, no nothing, no like team. nothing, right. nothing. Yeah, other than, other dude. than other than all of us playing in the backyard, going, you know, trying to give each other, uh, you know, pile drivers and other shit that we should have done. Right. You know, but that uh, doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's not. I mean, there was no training. Um, so basically, man, you know, we went. Um, uh, to it was buddy. It was Buddy Wayne's backyard. Uh, and, and Buddy Wayne had a son named Aubrey Wayne. And uh, basically, they had a ring in the backyard, you know, the typical, you know, Memphis-style ring. No, just 
crap boards on it. Uh, but that's carp- also carpet. Memphis you know? style too. It's just somebody having a, ba- a ring in their backyard. Yeah, oh yeah, hundred yeah, so. percent. You know, and it was just it was roll out the thing, put the put, uh, and I still remember we uh, we rolled out this carpet that was basically the you know the the matting or the padding. For for the thing, and there was like five or six dead rats in this oh, thing. Oh, jeez! And it's just like, okay, all right, the, what am I getting myself into here? And but Sid was with you. Yeah, Sid was with me, and, and he's then we a put, pro. Yeah, we put the yeah, and he didn't seem like it bothered him, so I just <laughs> went with it. Uh, you know, we put the mat out, did all that stuff, and then uh, Buddy's like, "Get in here, Aubrey!" And Aubrey, you know, it was around the business, I guess, from the time he was freaking like two. I mean, you know, so he could he was doing all kind of crazy stuff. I'm like, holy crap. Well, how old was he? So uh I was right at twenty and Aubrey was probably fourteen. Okay, 15. that's what I pictured. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. Um and stuff. And I mean, you know, and it was uh, and then, you know, Buddy and Sid were on the you know, on the sitting down on the ground with their uh elbows on the uh, on the mat and Lock up with him, Aubrey. You know, and I'd, I'd do something, and it was, meh, and you know, and, I, and Buddy would be like, "Oh, he needs to do it this way," and then Sid would be like, "Oh, you need, you know." And it was, you know, basically, I learned lock up, headlock, shoot off, tackle. That was it. And then two weeks later, I was in a match, and it was, uh, it was probably. I mean, I, there's probably twenty five hundred people there at least. What? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. oh yeah, yeah. No, and and I and we were in the main event, and Sid gave me a pair of black boots, a pair of black trunks, and a leather vest, and and <laughs> knee pads. That, and, those were definitely his. Too. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was all you his. You were wearing the. Dumb- I was wearing all his stuff. That was WCW yep. Sid Vicious. Yep. A hundred percent. You know, and and wearing cool. all and wearing all his stuff. And uh, I, and he was Sid Vicious and I was Kid Vicious, uh, it, which you know another name. I guess I do might have more names than, than Festus. Um, and, and and basically freaking um, and we wrestled uh, men on a uh, mo and a kid by the name of Dirt Bike, and he came out in all Dirt Bike gear and his helmet on. And was he all English this stuff? Huh? Was it English? Was he English? No, no, no. He was, you know, there was you know the rest of Dirt Bike. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, but no, this kid was. Uh, you know, completely redneck. Um, yeah. You know, from Knox, the Knoxville area, and uh, yeah, it was, it, and that was that. And so, uh, Kane was on that show beforehand, but he was just doing autographs. Uh, Road Dog, and I think Billy was on that show, and they were there, you know, beforehand doing autographs, and then you know, uh, Sid and them was doing, and this was like, you know, right at the the, you know, the the air. I mean, mm-hmm. the, it was just all blowing up. Well, and also, the, it's funny because there's. It's funny now, so we see this time where like WWE is grabbing all these dudes from the indies, oh, yeah. and there was a time, and you remember it too, because it was yep. it was that, and I remember yep. too where there was a little pocket where the guys on top could go do indie yep. shows, yep. and usually sign, but sometimes yep. they would wrestle. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on a show, or or there. I think my trainers were on a show, and they were, it was like maybe a week before I started training, uh-huh. and like Val Venus was promoted yep. to wrestle on a show, yep. and he was. Maybe not that much money. Like now, oh, yeah. thinking oh, about yeah. it. <laughs> well, but then, but then too, they would do. I mean, like I, I remember, man, a couple times, uh, you know, because I was f- for those six months, I was, you know, basically, lack of a better term, the Sid Young boy. I guess, I guess, and I didn't really even know it. Mm-hmm. I just, I did, I, I didn't, you know, know that was kind of why I was there. And uh, man, I remember counting money, and it was like six and seven grand and just Polaroids, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what the, you know, and I mean, he's bitching cause there's not enough Polaroid film at the local yes. Walgreens and Walmart and he's buying all this, all this stuff. And we have to, you know, go get some more real quick and come back. Dude, and, that's a thing that yeah. hasn't come up on this podcast yeah. that much. Well, and especially the era of, of how we're all have pro wrestling tees stuff mm-hmm. and all this stuff was the Polaroid. Oh man. Polaroid. <laughs> that was, king. I had a Polaroid. Oh yeah. Hell I still yeah. have it in my apartment. Yeah. And, and you like try to the find, shelf. Like, like trying to find film now. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Right. I mean, you spend more money and get the film than you do actually making in the Polaroids, but it's like, you know, it's one of those things. That was a key part of independent yep. wrestling oh, yeah. was Huge. Polaroid pictures. Huge. And I, I think I had a friend who like worked at Polaroid and gave me like all this free. Oh. So it was all free cash you for super me. super lucked out. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, that was a huge score but i can only imagine then you know i knew the numbers that i was doing i could only imagine mm-hmm. the number of polaroids right like you say that sid and those guys would do mm-hmm. those were a big part of wrestling that's so funny and have completely died out what else yep. was big back then i guess it was just eight by tens and polaroids yeah, eight huh? by, yeah i mean really eight by tens of polaroids but you think about the eight by tens and they were f- god awful <laughs> 
I mean, just god the awful. graphics on it. Well, there yeah. wasn't Photoshop. Yeah, I mean, it was just you know, just straight. You know, and normally you had the guy you know posing with the belt if he was the champ, and he was naked. You know, and it was just covering <laughs> his crotch. I mean, that was like the glorious shot back then. Right. Everybody had to have the, the 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 belt over their over their crotch. You know, the shot. You know, sure. to, to, to sell you know sell the rats. Sean you know? Sean Michaels led a revolution. Yeah, oh, God, <laughs> with yeah. that best shot. <laughs> um, okay, so so. So that you kind of just were like, "Hey, I'm in wrestling now." Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was like one thing led to another, man. Um, you know, and it was just, I like Sid just got me booked. I mean, if he was on the show, I was on the show. And you uh, didn't do any like real formal training. Was it all just no, with him? Uh, all was. Did just you eventually kinda, start going to a school and start doing stuff? Or uh, I did a little bit uh, down there, but I mean, really, everything was just kind of hands on in front of somebody. Um, didn't it, have to pay. I, That's pretty good. Yeah, it, it, yeah, <laughs> and, and until until I mean, really, until Louisville, um, uh, like uh, I, it was back and forth with uh, Memphis Championship Wrestling and, and USWA. Like one week they would have the quote unquote developmental territory at the time and then you power pro would get it back uh, you know or th- it was uh, it was like flip flop like 90 times it just all depend on on what mood Lawler was in and how he finagled it at the time you know and it just went back so back that was forth. all Lawler I you know I think so I mean you know well, I mean kinda, later we learned OVW his, was yeah, Jim Cornette yeah, who kind of got yeah, that yeah system. And, and he got it and then um uh, basically, uh, Terry Golden, who was in charge of uh, Memphis Championship Wrestling and like the developmental time at the time, uh, they ended up saying, you know what, hey, we're moving it all to Louisville now, and then we're going to move it all to Cincinnati now. And at that time, um, it was like, oh, okay. And I was like, all right, wh- I don't know what to do. How, and then pissed, Ke- was, how pissed was he? He's pretty – he didn't. Did he think he was going to Louisville to be a part of that? No. Did he, he understand it was being taken yeah, away from Yeah, I think he he knew. Um you know, kind of thing, and I guess you were probably I, so uh, young, you didn't even know what yeah. his what his emotions yeah, I, like were. Like right? I, yeah, I didn't like at that time, man. I it was just all a whirlwind. Like I look back at stuff, I'm like, oh crap! If I just would have known what I know now, like then it would have been a lot. You know, I, 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 I like, yeah, I, I can only imagine how how pretty much everybody went. God, what a mark. Um, you know, but I also, just didn't also know politics better. that just didn't. Click yeah, they just didn't click at all. Like yeah. now, they I would have read right into it and, right. and, and instantaneously been like, you know, picked a side or been like, what you know, politic my way into it. At that time, I was just oblivious. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I really was. I was just oblivious to it. Um, and so sorry. So Sid yeah. was just taking you to Memphis and US. He's just taking yeah. you to all these. Yeah, places. yeah, yeah. Back and forth. And yeah. you were wrestling all yep. these places yep. with all these. Yep. And it was uh, me, time. Sid, and Tommy Rogers, and uh, um, at, and. Tommy, uh, you know, really, I, I guess, yeah, kind of like made me and Sid have a kind of a falling out because Tommy got mad at Sid because Sid wasn't treating me like a complete young boy. You know, <laughs> you know, why isn't he carrying your bags and why isn't he doing this? And of course, why? Tommy was probably going to all Japan then. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And it was all this stuff. And it was like, um, and I still remember we went to New York um, and it was, they were going to pick up money from Paul Heyman and, uh, ECW because they got screwed on some pay per view or something and they wanted the money but we were up there for uh, Tom O'Brien is it Tom O'Brien um, Mike O'Brien Mike O'Brien there you go it was still um, running then yeah uh, and, and those shows were uh, his shows were good God I mean they were thirty five hundred four thousand plus he's a millionaire that yeah guy? he's I been would, doing those shows for twenty years I would hope <laughs> I would hope and I've never seen one not draw yeah. I still remember meeting Austin and Deborah at a hotel. Uh, in New York, and I was with Sid, and uh, again, like a dumb green kid, I just had no effing idea, you know. And I'm buddy buddying with everybody, thinking, oh, they just like me, you know. I had no idea, um, but yeah, meeting the, and then w- we ended up getting done with uh, the show, and then beelining it straight to the Elks Lodge because they wanted to make sure that they got their money. And I remember coming up like, uh, yeah, man, I'll fight whatever. I, I had no clue who You'll these guys fight. were. You're ready to fight. Well, yeah, because they 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 were owed money. I, were but I just muscle. didn't. Yeah, I just didn't know any better. Okay. I honestly, I knew knew better. And now I look back, and I'm like, holy fuck, I could have ruined everything, yeah. you know, then. But I just didn't know any better. And I remember um, uh, going up in the. It was uh, you know uh, Justin Credible and uh, 
Shane Douglas and, and and all these guys and you know Sid and Tommy come up barreling up and I'm barreling behind them and I have no idea what, the, what why I'm even really there I, I didn't get to get anything and I, you drove from so, Memphis to New York no 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 we flew they okay. flew yeah and, and I mean and what they bought your plane ticket oh yeah this is I mean I was so hold on they're I, bitching about money no 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 not not ECW uh, I understand uh, yeah yeah and, I, no, yeah, but, but Sid is bitching about money, and Tommy Dreamer is bitching about money. But they're going to shell out three, four hundred bucks. No, they didn't do that for me. Michael Bryan bought my ticket. Oh, yeah, you were on yeah, the show. Yeah, I was oh, on the okay. show. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. And, and like I, I, you know, I still remember guys asking me, "Hey, come do an interview," and I'm like, "Okay," and I'm talking about like nothing, and I'm like, "I have no idea why I'm even." You know, I, I just, I just didn't know. I was naive. Fucking. Dumb well, they probably kid. thought you were a big star. Yeah, oh yeah, because I was Sid. with them. Yeah, yeah, I was hanging out with them. You know, so everybody's, you know. Um, uh, freaking, um, uh, who was it? Uh, did you think you were a big star? I, dude, I didn't know what I was. I had no <laughs> idea. Of course. I mean, I guess because I, I just didn't know any better, you know? And, I mean, but and would I you mean, walk around like I'm the man or would you walk around and be like, oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing? Uh, pretty much. I don't know what the fuck I'm okay. doing. And I would tell guys that I didn't, you know, I don't know what the fuck. I, um, but I mean, fuck, I, I was making $250 paydays back then. Mm. Like now I look back, I'm like, Jesus, I'm making can't even get making those now. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I gotta beg for that now. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Right. You know, plus plane ticket, trans, yeah, yeah. a nice hotel. It's like, what the fuck? Uh, so I mean, you know, I, yeah, like, and that's where I think that Tommy, you know, got into Sid's head is well, this kid doesn't even know any better, you know. And I was like, I, but I didn't know any better because that's just I was just handed it, you know. I, I mean, you know, and not till I. Got backtracked, got signed developmental, and then went up to Louisville. Did I realize, fuck, I'm an idiot. It's a whole you, new you know, world. you know. I mean, Rip Rogers telling me the first the first day I met him, and I think I'm cool. I'm like, yeah, man. Sid told told me to tell you hi. I don't even like Sid. That motherfucker stood me up one time for softball, you know, or something. And I'm like, there's a softball again, thing nev- again. I never and, went and there. And I went. I don't even know. I've never seen him pick up a bat, Rip. But hey, whatever. Never. I made still it to got the. Place. He pulls out his fanny pack and shows me the receipt from some shit that he bought for Sid to get up there and he never said and hey, motherfucker he didn't tell you to, I, I, and that was just my way of getting in mm. you know at the time was oh Sid told me to tell you hello right. you know I mean and most of the guys would look at me like you're a complete fucking dumbass yeah. you know but uh, you know here you I am you know the nuclear you know. heat that's sitting Yo, in, no, uh, in yeah. this industry I, for he years would, I mean he was just a really cool guy to me at the gym we went and ate and you know and worked out you know I just I didn't know any better sure you were kid vicious I was exactly <laughs> exactly so how do you get signed uh, does somebody are you on somebody's radar or is it just the idea that uh, you've been doing those shows with, no um, you know finally we had the falling out and I went with Terry Golden and Started started wrestling for um, you know Memphis Championship and, and and then back and forth kind of Power Pro Memphis Championship Power Pro, and at the time uh, Paul Barra came in with Kevin Kelly and all them, and I was you know I've always kind of leaned towards the dark dark stuff so you know I had a long black jacket on black hair all that stuff and I was actually ta- tagging with uh, Glenn Roof uh, from the, the Headbangers, um, and uh, um. And they were like, man, his his look. And Barra goes, he looks like a young taker because of the ginger coming through and the mm-hmm. black and all this stuff. And he's tall and all this stuff. And they went, oh, all right. And then a couple weeks later, they invited me to uh, Cincinnati for the training camp uh, in Heart in, at Heartland. And it was me, AJ Styles, Matt Morgan, Renee Dupree. Um, Sonny Siaki, Travis Tomko. Uh, what year was this? Was it 99, 2000? Right around then, yeah. Do you remember my trainer? Was he there? Oh, uh, Danny uh, Dominion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Adara yeah, James? Yeah, yeah. So you were in that one. Yeah. That's so funny. And uh, all that stuff. And uh, He was literally the only one that didn't get signed from that, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I got lucky. Yeah. That's all I know. Um, but yeah, it was... It was uh, yeah, it, it, it just got up there and, uh, man, luckily, like I, I was smart enough to keep getting in the ring with AJ and AJ made me look like a million effing dollars, dude. He just, he, God, he's so good. Um, and stuff. He made me look quick. He made me look explosive. And then, you know, when he did my stuff, I probably stiffed the shit out of him, but he didn't bitch about it. Um, and stuff. Cause I remember a couple of times they had me and Tom go, go against each other and, I just beat the shit it's out of each other. Oh, it right. was, it you know, and stuff. But I, you know, I worked that, 
I guess that old Memphis style, you know, so everything was, you know, really slow and, you know, and, and stuff like that. And um, at the time that, you know, the movie seven had come out. So I was, I was seven, but I was using all the seven deadly sins, like promo stuff, kind of like off the John Doe thing. And uh, Cornette was like, oh, this is great. This is, you know, and so Cornette was like, oh, yeah, let's sign him because I can use him in, you know, OVW. And also, yeah, that's great so. that he was just thinking about using. Hey, whatever it doing, takes, man. In his <laughs> developmental. Yeah. Hey, whatever it takes. Not to be like, we can make him a big star. Yeah. Uh, what was the money like then? Do you remember? Will you tell uh, me? I got my first contract was $750 a week. $750 a week. Yeah, $750 a week. So, I mean. It it was good, but you know the thing is, is in Memphis um, when I was down there, I wasn't I, I was wrestling. I mean, you know, granted, you're making forty and fifty dollar paydays or whatever, but I was working at a PF Chang's and I was working on Bill Street bartending. Man, I was making double that a oh, week, okay. and so it was like actually take for me, it was taking a pay cut. Like when they told me, I was like, oh, I mean, I guess but you know. So, but I mean, I, again, I didn't know any better. You know, I mean. I'd been given, I mean, and that's the thing is I really look back and I had been given so stinking much without really working for it. Yeah. So I didn't know. I mean, I just, I didn't know. Well, I mean, what, I didn't know your... the guys that were, you know, driving from town to town making, you know, 10 bucks and some hot dogs and basically stealing gas to get there. You know, at all, I, you know, I was always riding in a freaking Cadillac with Sid gas paid for you know whatever i uh i still remember the first time i had to pay for gas and that was because of tommy again he's like you're not making this fucking kid pay for gas he just made a 250 dollars fucking payday and i'm like uh okay yeah i yeah i'll, I'll pay for what it what a cock block time yeah i mean tommy yeah Rogers. i mean god rest I, I you know i did learn a lot from him but yeah he he kind of fucked me a couple times <laughs> right? you know yeah i was on gravy train sure um and so when you say 750 you Looking back, meaning you didn't know, are you saying you think you could have gotten more, or you? No, 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 oh, no, okay. no. I, I fuck no. I didn't deserve any more. Right. Okay. I should have been paid. It all. But but no, I got up to to Louisville, and you know, uh, you know, guys kind of whisper around of what they're making. And you guys got you got guys like Conway and Dinsmore making three hundred dollars a week, right? You know, and I'm making seven fifty. I mean, there was just no reason. Now, granted, I had to move from my house up to there, but you know, but then you had guys, you know. um, uh, like Lesnar or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Lesnar and those guys that were making just, I mean, huge right, like amounts of money. My equivalent would be, um, what was the Russian dude, the big Russian guy's name? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, why are we off? Vladimir Kozlov. Yeah. I think he was making, he was on like four grand a week, I think, yeah. you know, and we were like yeah. making whatever. Well, Sean O'Hare, Sean O'Hare, uh, I ended up being his, uh, like, we ended up being roommates somehow. Um, and, uh, it, shit, he was making like thirty five hundred, thirty five hundred a week. Like he wouldn't even let me pay rent because he was like, "Oh, you're not making enough. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, you buy some groceries here and there. You know, keep the house clean. You know, hey, okay, you know, done. So he was a good dude. Yeah, oh, he yeah. died, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He passed away. Su uh, suicide. Suicide. Yeah. Uh, he. It, I, it, supposedly, I guess the story is that he didn't. He's always always was gay. Uh, or something, but didn't want to come out of the closet, whatever. I, I mean, when when you look back at it, as much as he likes styling his hair, his clothes, and everything else, sure, you could have seen it. But who gives a shit? I mean, you know, it's 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 now. It's like you it's, know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, looking back, you're like, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, sense. it all did make oh, sense. Yeah. yeah, he really liked, I you know, he liked his pedicures, his manicures, right, right, and right. I mean, he, you know, he liked doing his hair and stuff like that. And then, I mean, he, you know, he could always pull all the girls from the from the bar and stuff. And it was just like he never was like content with him. It'd just be like, ah, I don't like. It. It's like Sean, gorgeous girl, and yeah. you just get kicking well, and her out. Canyon was that era too, so nope. it kind of says a lot. And you know now, you know I don't know. I mean, I guess if we use Darren Young, and we just see how yeah. every it's not like everyone doesn't give a f like we give. It's like amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. so hard. Yeah, but I guess in just that fifteen years, and society's worked that way too. Yeah. Is that it? Just doesn't. I yeah. guess you feel bad. For but it I mean, I think it's like that with anything with the wrestling. You know, at least for me is like I, I don't. Man, I just I've never. I mean, I, and I don't know if it was growing up in in Memphis and being around, but you know, like black, white, Mexican. I, I just don't give a shit. Yeah. It just to me, it just you know, hey, you know, as long as we can get along and we sure. can be friends, I, I the the boundary there 
But it's easy yeah. for you and I you know, to say that. It, yeah, it's yeah. It's very hard for someone. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I guess it's the rep, business. but it's the wrestling business, I guess, in a weird way. You know, because I, I, I get, it's always, you know, you get in the back of the locker room and everybody's just joking around. Nobody really, you know, nobody really, really cares. It's almost like, and this is where, I, you know, I kind of hope it moves away, is that like, if we had known that, and I'm, I'm not, maybe, you know, I'm probably, not that I remember, but like, yeah, yeah. oh, we wouldn't have, we would have been sensitive and like been like, or yeah. joked with them. Yeah, yeah. Or hey, someone yeah, who was hey, out or yeah. not out. Yeah, right. But yeah. because we didn't know, you would say something yeah, hey, stupid. Yeah, that's yeah, ignorance. I, guess. I don't know. But he was a good dude, Sean. Yeah. Hunter. Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. And yeah. Jindrak, uh still chomping it out in Mexico. Dude, Jindrak sc- scored huge, man. <laughs> he scored huge. He figured it out. Got down there. Figured out the language. Figured out everything. Right. And I mean, he's. I mean, God bless, man. Every time I see it, I'm like, you're like the poster child of, you know, a soap a, opera American opera. coming to Mexican and, in Mexico and just making it. Right. You know? Uh, pretty, um, okay, tell me about Mordecai. Okay. Uh, 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 Mordecai, man, was, uh, it, it was weird. Um, I was always doing the seven deadly sins stuff and all that stuff. And basically, um, uh, it was, you know, WrestleMania 20 at Madison Square Garden. Uh, the next night, I think we were in Boston. We were Boston or Bridgeport, somewhere around there. Which and, one was 20? Who was on top? I forget. Uh, well, that was uh, um, Benoit and uh, um, is that where Eddie. Ben, is that the big celebration for those guys? Yeah, oh, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, and I was always I was really, always really good friends with Benoit. Like, I don't know why. He just always took to me really well um and stuff and so man i still remember man i watched it with his son david uh you know off to the side and stuff like that and uh they just they call me up they're like hey uh me and tomka were on the road for like six months as a tag team i mean just beating everybody up and doing all kind of stuff and uh you know i thought we were going to be a tag team i you know i thought for sure that we were going to come in as this like righteous tag team kind of thing and uh basically uh, that next day we go into Vince brings us in one at a time in his office. He goes, all right. He goes, I don't need tag team wrestlers. Um, I need. Is that um, Vince calling you right now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, tell a story, right? kid?" <laughs> um, no. Uh, and he goes, I don't need tag team. Yeah, I don't need tag team wrestlers. And I still remember, uh, man, you know, going in there, it was, um, uh, me, Vince, Stephanie, and, uh, Johnny. And, uh, like, you know, reading glasses on, pad of paper in his hand, and just, like, I was like, you know, and, and again, like, it's one of those things where I think I was young and naive again, you know, which made me even more confident and cocky, like, a little bit. So I guess it worked out pretty good in my favor, in a way, because I walked in there, like, just, fuck it, you know, um, you know, and he goes, hey, what do you want to do? And I went, well... I, I go, well, I mean, me and Travis are killing his tag team. He goes, no, nah, I don't need tag teams. Tag team wrestling isn't making me money. I need single stars. And I went, okay. So I went, here's what I have. Uh, and then, and it was basically Mordecai was supposed to be Malachi. And it was basically supposed to be like children of the corn kind of, kind of thing, you know, building, building a flock and building all this stuff. And, um, you know, using, kind of using my, my, uh, you know, my Southern Baptist religious background, as you know, like a you know whipping post of hair, uh, hellfire and brimstone kind of stuff. Well, me, so that's exactly so, what you pitched to him. Yep, like, what do exact, you say? It, Here's yeah. what it is. I'm I'm Southern Baptist. Yeah, basically. I have this yep, idea. yep. I got this idea, but I would like to, like it to be an in between thing of uh, Catholicism, Southern Baptist, and this. I'd like to get you know because my my dad was grew up as a, as a Catholic and converted to Southern Baptist, but then became a Southern Baptist, uh, you know, deacon, you know, Sunday school teacher, Patty kind of, kind of thing. And I was like, you know, and I grew up, you know, listening to the he- uh, hellfire and brimstone services. So I, you know, I've got all the verses in my head. I got all the, you know, you know, kind of, kind of stuff of, Hey, you're going to burn, you know, all this stuff, you know, sin, 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 can't drink, can't smoke, can't dance, can't do, you know, you know, make sure you give your money to, you know, God, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I basically told him, you know, told him all about it. And I said, this is, you know, this is what I see. And I said, and I see it as being all white, you know, 100% purity, you know, and then to the point where, you know, in a match, if the guy smudges me and gets black on me, I just lose all control because it's, 
I, I like now I'm un, I'm unpure, you know, hair white, you know, everything's white, you know, you know, it's just, and it's all purity thing. And I, and, and I went as far as wearing all white every day. I mean, to the point where they're calling me Colonel Sanders in the back because mm-hmm. I went and bought almost like three grand worth of white clothes and I would wear white clothes to the airport. I would wear white clothes to the gym. Well, before you go clothes, to that, yeah. that meeting, so that with all those big heads in there. Uh-huh. And then you you stop the pitch and like do you see his reaction? Is there like a smile? No, hundred percent. Just yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. What? hundred percent. There's a, there's a smile. There's. I a mean, smile. oh yeah. There's the evil genius <laughs> smile to right. it. And he's looking through me, and he's just like, like, and he's like looks into my eyes, and I'm like, you know what? Screw this. Like normal. Like from that point on, like I never really could like have a stare off with Vince. Like after I I fucked Mordecai up. Uh, I like, I, I like, I never could look him in the eye like that ever again. And I still remember that day. It's like, you know, it's just as we're sitting here now. It's, and he just looks up and he's got his glasses on and it's like he peers through. And I'm like, and I'm just like, and I just sit up and I'm just like this. And all of a sudden I see him like clicking and I'm like, I, I've, I, I think I might have something here. Right. And then the next day they took me in with a, a brawler and they wanted me to do a promo however I thought I could do it. So I basically did a, the promo of, you know, walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear, no evil, da da, you know, all this stuff. And Vince comes in there and is like, F-, you know, you know, he, you just tell that all of a sudden he was like, fuck. Yeah. Wait, he came in where to the promo room so with, he with w- brawler them. Yeah. He came in to hear it. Uh, so I had to okay. go cut it. And then he came in to hear it back. He watches it. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh shit. Mm. And then all of a sudden, uh, Taker just you know he went and got Taker. They came in and they watched it. Mark, no, exactly. Mark, it was you it, yeah. No, I, I mean honestly, <laughs> I, I mean you know, and that's and that's the fucking craziness of it. Yeah. And he brings him in, and then you and then they walk out. And I'm like, all right, what the fuck's going on here? You know, kind of shit. And then, uh, you know, uh, they come back in and said, oh, it was you know re- really really good. They're talking, and I'm like, okay. And about a couple hours later, I see, uh, see, you know, take her in the hall again. And he, he's like, God damn it. Pulls me to the side. And, uh, um, basically he's like, man, he goes, you did good kid. Yeah. You did good. And I was like, well, what do you mean? I did. He goes, you did good. And that was all it was said. And, and, and then, uh, I, I, uh, about a, another week goes by. Uh, Bear was there, a couple other things, um, and you know, Paul had helped me get my job. And he goes, "You you really are setting yourself up. Just keep doing what you're doing, you know, kind of thing." And I mean, I was, I think I was 26. I mean, I was pushing 300 pounds. Right. I, you know, like I. So essentially, they saw <laughs> a, an opponent for take. Yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah. I and, mean, you know, and you said you you said you fucked it up. No, I did. You did I, fuck it yeah, up. Yeah, I did fuck it up. I um I, I mean, a couple weeks later, promo I go up uh um actually it was before I even taped the promos. They actually let me do the promos, which believe it or not, I couldn't believe. Um I was finishing up at OVW and we were in um just outside of Henryville. Um, and it was me and Matt, uh, me, Matt, Matt, a bunch of people wrestled that night. And then we all raced back because we were all going out that night. And we went to Bar Louisville and Blue Martini and all this stuff it, because it was Sly's, I think it was Sly's birthday or Maven's birthday. Uh, and so we, we rushed back, got there, you know, uh, took them out. Uh, my, my wife, who is my, uh, was really my girlfriend at the time, not even my fiance yet. Uh, my roommate, uh, which was another girl, um, and Maven, O'Hare. Maven Slot. No, 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 no. I, I since moved out of Sean O'Hare's yes. house, um, kind of stuff. That's a whole other. That, that take us another twenty minutes. Of how you know? That's where I started seeing the signs, maybe. Um, but uh, um, basically, we all went out, and then uh, we went to Blue Martini first. I wasn't even drinking, but I'd already had my hair dyed blonde. You know, they'd already kind of. We'd already kind of started setting this up. We didn't have the gear made yet. We didn't have a couple other things, but everything was kind of going that way. Um, you know, I uh, already had really big talks with Taker. I had been talking to him a shit ton. I, we kind of knew where this thing was going. Uh, long story short, 
um, we go to uh, uh, Bar Louisville, and uh, there was a kid in there, and he just kept pushing through this. And he was getting angry because Sly and Maven were pulling all the tail. I mean, they, they really were. And I was leaned up against the bar. All in white, mind you. Yeah. <laughs> All in white, because I'm I'm living the I'm living the gimmick already. Right. And I headbutted him, and I mean I I blasted him, and his nose, you know, smoked and everything else, and. Cops and all that shit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, no cops. So I, I walk out and, uh, and, you know, I'm crimson mask white guy now. I look like a giant tampon, basically, when I walk out of the thing. Walk out, I tell the cops, and I'm like, hey, you know, uh, this is what happened, da, da, da. And they go, you've been here before. And I've helped that, helped them out a couple times before in mm-hmm. Louisville with fights and, or with guys that got into trouble or whatever else. And I was always, hey, I'll take care of it. Let me take them. Let me do this. And they're like, oh, we know you. You probably did not start this. And they go, go home. Uh, two days later, we're in Houston, Texas, and I get a call from my uh, wife and she's or girlfriend, whatever. Uh, she's like, the cops are here. They're here to arrest you. You're going to jail. This kid's been in the hospital for the last three days because he's almost bled out because he was so intoxicated that when I headbutted him, they couldn't stop the nosebleed kind, gotcha. of, kind of shit. And, I mean, long story short, man, it, it went and uh, – I remember walking in, you know, talk to Vince about it. And I was like, man, I fucked up. I really fucked up. And I remember the day before I actually talked to Vince, Taker was there. And I'm wrestling in the ring with Arn and we're, I'm learning all this new stuff that we're, we're, we're trying to like think outside the box with some of the stuff that we're doing. And, uh, and I just see Taker shaking his head. He goes, you dumbass. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I, I know, I know. He goes, he goes, I think they're going to take care of it. I think they're going to work it out for you. Don't don't sweat it. I think we're still on we're still on par. We're still on par. And, you know, next day Vince Vince tells me what he's you know, I got the lawyers. We're going to offer him such and such amount of money. You know, we're going to try to make this go away. But by the way, you will be paying for this. Uh, I, okay. You know, I, long story short, I'm going to have to anyway. You know, uh and then uh the next week, the promos start. I go up there to Stanford, film all the promos, have to talk to Vince's lawyers now and everything and explain everything that, that happened, you know, and why it happened and, you know, all this stuff. And long story short, Judgment Day happens. And uh, they basically, the next day after Judgment Day, they were like, yeah, you're, you guys are lying to us. They, we sent them my developmental a contract because I was still under developmental at the time. This is what I was actually <laughs> making, $750 a week. I'm really not worth getting sued. But then they turned around because uh, they offered them some money. And basically, uh, uh, Vince and them um, kind of screwed it, I guess, in a way because they they thought, oh, we're just lowballing them. So then all of a sudden it went from a million dollars to five five million dollars that they wanted you know, from me and the company mm. and everything else. And they were like, kid you're just so they basically were like we gotta fire we're just gonna fire you because it's just not worth this legal battle so did you, you deal know? with all that legal battle afterwards oh yeah hundred hundred fifteen thousand dollars that i lost on to him or on lawyers? to him to him holy shit yeah so how did you deal with that because i can relate <sighs> it fucking it sucks yeah it sucks a lot you know um and i remember so it all got settled, everything else. And then Tommy had called and goes, Hey, we want to bring you back. And so I was paying, I mean, basically what I could at the time, which was a couple hundred bucks a week or to this you know, guy. Yeah. Is. To what, yeah. To whatever. I still remember I had to borrow money from my wife's dad, uh, at the time, which was $20,000. And then I've had to borrow my part of my dad's life insurance, which was $20,000. Because if I didn't pay them forty thousand dollars that day of the court deal, then I was they were going to put me in jail huh. uh, instead. And it was like, uh, you know, and, and of course, parents, here you go. So long story short, all that go go to uh, go back to you know WWE, CW, all this stuff, and every pay per view I did <laughs> went to this kid. Wow, you know, so it was yeah. All, all this money that I could have made, right? It was all, it, you know, just really just paying this off in the sure. you know, in, in the end game, you know. So, long story short, if you see me in a bar and you start a fight, I will walk away. You can hit me as many times in the face as you like, and I'm gonna go peace out because right. at that point I've learned, I learned my lesson. Are you because still paying this thing off? No, no, no. Okay. It's all done now. Okay. Um, but 
uh, I mean, in, in the long short of it is, is man, I dude, I, I wasted the biggest dream of my life. Yeah. I, so, t- that, Taker was the only guy I ever wanted to wrestle. Does bottom, that, hold, bottom does that line. stay with you? Like, do you still, is it like still something you always oh, flashback? Oh yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. How do you deal with like yeah. looking back at that or just knowing you I, can't do anything? Just and, know you can't do anything, man. Yeah. You look, you look back at that and I mean, like literally like, I'm like, man, I just wasted it, you know? And then you get, you get all the stuff of, you know, guys going, oh, well, under, Undertakers are not under, uh, Mordecai sucked. That's why they took it away. No. It had nothing to do with that. You know, it wasn't, you know. It was ready to go. Yeah, it was ready to go. And it would have gone. And they would have made it go no matter what. I mean, it would have gone. And, and, you know, and just knowing. And then, you know, when I went back, like, Vince never, like, looked at me the same. It was always like, I can't totally trust you. You know, there's, and I was supposed to go against Taker again with, you know, like, Dusty got it all done. And we were about to go that route again. And, like, Again, you could just see it in the back of Vince's head of, here we go again. Is this kid going to fuck it all up for me? And you got saved you know? because they were on sci-fi, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you that know? was it. <laughs> and then they just needed a van- they needed a vamp. They needed somebody like me, and that was it. I mean, that was, remembered you. Yeah, that was – yeah, that was it. And, and I mean, literally, I, I got lucky on that one, mm. you know, and got up there and got into it and really started progressing with it and, you know, and then they, you know, got back on the radar, but then – you know, still at the, at the end of the day, you know, Vince, or he's a businessman and he keeps looking back as I, if, this, if, this if I give him the ball again, is he going to, are, are we going to get into this child? Yeah. Right? Are we going to get into this? Are we going to get into this, you know, this shit again? And, and I mean, that's, that's like, you know what I was saying, man, I couldn't like from that day, I couldn't look back in Vince's eyes the way I did the day that I told him. I am going to be your next fucking main eventer, you know? And, and that's kind of that day I knew the way that I looked at him, he knew it. And then from that point on, I always like, I guess it had remorse, you know, in a way, in a weird sort of way, you know, it's like, I, I just, I knew I'd fucked it up. And I mean, like, uh, even, you know, this, this past WrestleMania, you know, I sent, uh, you know, I sent Mark a message and I was like, man, I said, you know, and he sends me one back. I dude, I know we could have, and, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was almost like I almost started bawling. Yeah. I was like, God, he goes, he goes, I know we should have, and I know we could have, and I know this, and man, he goes, it would have been a lot of fun, you know, kind of fun kind of thing. And I was like, man, I, you know, and I look back and I said, you know, I told him, I said, man, I'm just sorry I let you down, dude. I just, you know, fuck, I let you down. Fuck, 20 years later, you're yeah, saying that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is, 15, I mean, almost yeah, 15, yeah. You're still doing it. Nah. And you're still, I mean, you have your, your kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys. Yeah, and I mean, I look back at some of it, you know, and especially with that, with my my son and my daughter and stuff like that is, man, you know, maybe it is for the better sometimes because, man, I'm getting to be a, a dad, you know, a dad like no other. I look at some of, some of these guys, I'm like, man, how do they do it? Right. I mean, I, like all the stuff that they miss, you know, I mean, from being on the road four days a week. And I mean, granted, they got it easier now than they did years ago. But I mean, it's like, God, I couldn't even like, like I get mad at myself for, uh, you know, being late to a baseball game, let alone missing it. You know, I mean, I couldn't even imagine some of the stuff that, you know, these, these guys are missing every weekend. Uh, where are you at on the internet, man? Uh, on the internet, uh, social media wise, uh, it's at the Kevin Furtick, uh, and it's, uh, Twitter and Instagram and then, uh, Kevin Thorne Furtick on Facebook. Okay. And you got a pro wrestling tea store? Yeah, I got a pro wrestling tea store. I think it's under Mordecai, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> I need to actually, uh, like, I, I mark out on all your shirts, and I'm like, damn it, I need to really, like, get get it, get more involved in the, and, and getting somebody, you know, doing something cool with right. these, th- these shirts well, kind of I'm thing. I'm not the best you know? example. So, I feel that. So, so if there's anybody out there yeah. that, you know, has got a go. great idea, hey, I'm, I, I'm in. There you you know, go. come up with something for me, send it to me, let's, let's, uh, let's do something cool. Let's you know? do it. So thanks for being on, man. Man, I appreciate it, dude. It was awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Kevin Thorne finally on the podcast. We ran into each other a lot while in WWE. He was there much longer than I was. But Mordecai and Goldman had the same amount of TV time, probably. So we understand each other uh, a little bit. All right, before we get out of here, let's get in some plugs and upcoming events. All right, the best way that you can support ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter, Instagram, at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast, also slash Colt Cabana. My storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of this show are ad-free. They're on Howl.fm slash Colt. Use that code Colt. Get a free month. 
ColeWrestling at gmail.com, my very public email. Maybe you're a promoter, want to put me on your upcoming show or a convention. I got a YouTube channel. Also, ColeCommander.com is my website. There you can find my P.O. box. Send me something cool. Razor Ramon sent me their cassette tape. Lauren sent me something from her kids. Christy invited me to her wedding. And Peter sent me a graphic novel comic book he made about a fictional Alton, Illinois called The Life of Kings. That was a good little flip through. All right, upcoming July 8th and 9th, Newport and Cardiff, Wales, tinyurl.com slash comedy wrestling Newport slash comedy wrestling Cardiff. Saturday, July 15th, Marionette Park, Illinois, aawrestling.com. Sunday, July 16th, Toronto, Canada, smash dash wrestling.com. Love saying that. Saturday, July 22nd, Austin, Texas, wrestlecircus.com. Sunday, July 23rd, Gainesville, Florida, festwrestling.com. Saturday, July 29th, Concord, North Carolina, rohwrestling.com. I'll be doing commentary. August 4th through the 27th, every night at 10.20 p.m., the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Grab tickets at edfringe.com. Also doing some wrestling there. Saturday, August 19th, reckless-intent.com. Sunday, August 20th, rohwrestling.com. Saturday, August 28th, SWEonline.co.uk. When I get back, Thursday, September 7th, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Facebook slash First Wrestling. Friday, September 8th, Marty DeRosa and I are doing our comedy show in Boise, Idaho, 208comedyfest.com. Saturday, September 9th, Rahway, New Jersey, WrestleProOnline.com. All right, that is the show for this week. Huge thank you to you guys at home for listening and telling your friends. Thanks to Kevin Thorne. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone. Kid Russell and Matt Jenkins on the music. Dane Miller and Creaky with some help. I want to thank some sponsors. Highspots.com, a VOD service that can play all those past PWGs and some $5 wrestlings, AMA knee pads, gear, masks, a wrestling ring. OneHourTees.com, they help run ProWrestlingTees.com. That's the place where you can support your favorite independent wrestler. And TweetAudio.com slash Colt, the earbuds that I use. Get over 30% off of free shipping just because you listen to this show. And I don't know if this is a thing. But the, the hiccups have come back. This is the second time in a row when I've been in my apartment. <laughs> when I've been in my apartment, and during this ending part, I just get the hiccups. That's got to be something, right? Self-diagnose. Maybe you're a doctor of hiccupology, and you could diagnose it for me. Oh, did you hear that one? Maybe not. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go drink ten sips of water, like my grand, like my grandma Julie taught me. And then uh, hopefully the hiccups will be gone. All right, this has been the Art of Wrestling for Cold Cabana. I'm Cold Cabana. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> what do you want to say to everybody at the end of the show? Um, peace, love, and happiness. That's your ending. No. What I want to tell everybody. How did you think this went? What went? I'm asking you how you thought this podcast went before it happened. Oh, it's, I, I have no doubt it's going to go well.